Statistics show that around 85% of violinists and violists will develop a playing-related injury at some point in their performing lives. That is an insane number. Unlike sports in which athletes retire around the age of 40 on average, musicians play pretty much their whole lives, or at least most of us plan to, right? How terrible it would be if our performance timeline was cut short because of an injury that could have either been prevented or kept under control. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. This video is all about recovery exercises for violinists and violists, and the focus will be primarily on the area that gets overused and hurt the most frequently, which is the upper back and neck area, specifically on the left side. For the exercises in this video, I would like to send a personal thanks to my physical therapist from three years ago at Motion Sports Medicine, as well as a big shout out and thanks to physical therapist and personal trainer Angela McHuston from Music Strong, who I met virtually on Instagram. Angela is a pioneer for creating instrument-specific workouts, which can be used for conditioning, strengthening, and for recovery. No matter what instrument you play, even if you are a composer or a conductor watching this, Angela has something for you in her comprehensive and targeted arsenal of exercises. Many of them are already in her first book called Musician's Essential Exercises. If you are interested in checking them out, I'm going to leave an Amazon affiliate link to that book as well as Angela's website musicstrong.com in the description down below where you can check out her workshops and programs. If you decide to purchase anything directly from the website, please be sure to mention me, Ina Langerman, as a referral so I can get a small commission and that would be a great way for you to help support my channel and so I can bring more content like this to you and also on other related topics. Now, I am very grateful that I have never sustained an injury to the point that would put me out of playing for several months, which I've seen happen to so many colleagues of mine, especially in college and graduate school. However, I'm not as lucky as I just made it sound because for many years I've been dealing with a chronic strain and occasional pain in my upper left trapezius and neck area, which tends to get overused and flare up, especially when I'm sitting down for too long. This may sound familiar to those of you who play in orchestra frequently. Before the pandemic, the pain got really bad and went out of control during a week during which I had to play two Mozart operas back to back on a daily basis. On a couple of those days, I actually had double or opera rehearsals as well, which made things worse. I had a great time playing the operas, but after that Mozart week, I finally put my tough exterior ego aside and actually went and made an appointment at Motion Sports Medicine in Midtown East. And because they specialize in helping athletes, the physical therapists there are great at understanding the physical demands for, of musicians, and they were able to help me navigate through my struggles. So now, I would like to share with you a very handy set of exercises that have become part of my routine after rehearsals and concerts. And also, I do recommend that you do these at intermissions as well in orchestra concerts because they will really, really help and protect your back and help you get through the concerts. Of course, some of these exercises, I do make my own variations on them, but the purpose is still the same because they help prevent injury in those upper traps. So these will be a combination of what I learned from Angela's book as well as what I learned in my own physical therapy experience. Now, right off the bat, one recommendation that I'm gonna to make to you right away is don't wait until you experience pain to start incorporating exercises in your routine as part of your performing life. The goal is to start doing these exercises before pain starts. And of course, this can also help you if you just came out of a session and you're starting to feel old symptoms returning and you need to get them out of, under control. But really try to start getting into the habit of doing these before things get crazy. And while you're still feeling good, already start doing these exercises. You will thank yourself for this. And also just a quick disclaimer, that I am not a physical therapist, I'm not a personal trainer, nor am I a doctor of any kind. So if any of these exercises start to hurt, or if you're not sure if they are safe for you, please consult a physician. The first exercise we are going to do wall angels. 
or as I like to call them with my personal trainer at the gym, the WY exercise. The idea is to keep the back in a neutral position, neutral pelvic tilt, um, and lean against the wall. And we're going to make our arms into a W shape. You see they're forming a W and press them against the wall. And when you do that, be careful. Watch if your lower back is starting to uh, go forward try to keep a neutral position of course also don't do the opposite don't try to create um, a rounding like this try just to keep a neutral position create the w shape and then we're going to aim for the y so right now it looks more like a y shape and actually when i first started doing this exercise i was not able to get my arms any further than this this was as far as i was able to go so this is something that i started doing on several times a week and actually almost on a daily basis this last year actually so do 10 of these take a break do 10 more this is going to help activate the shoulder blades and it's going to prevent the shoulder blades from coming forward because violinists and violists, what do we do with our instruments? We hold them like this. So the shoulder, especially the left shoulder, comes forward. So this exercise will help neutralize that. The second exercise is going to involve the lacrosse ball. And I did try this with a tennis ball the first time and bad idea, I broke the tennis ball. Those things are not very strong, but lacrosse balls are perfect for this. And this is another exercise for the back. And what you're going to do, and you're gonna use the wall to help you out with this. The idea is to put the ball between the shoulder blade and where the spine begins. Most important is make sure that this does not go over the spine because that will be dangerous. You wanna make sure you put it right in between. So avoid the center. I'm gonna put this against the wall and we're going to roll up and down. And you can cross your arms like this. So lean against the ball, and you can go up and down to get the area between the shoulder blade and the spine. Do about 10 of these on each side. I'm just doing it on the left side to demonstrate. And another variation you can do is a zigzag pattern like this. Okay. So again, do this on both sides. Now, exercise number three, again, with this guy here, um, because our shoulders come forward when we hold our instruments, what happens is that the pectoral muscle gets super tight. It goes like that. We do this a lot. We're going to open this up a little bit here, right near the armpit area. So there are two ways you can do this. Um, one is you can use the wall to help, but I'm going to show you a variation that has been helpful for me, especially in rehearsals, because you know, you're know you not always gonna find a handy little wall like this um, during intermission or whatever, after concerts. So you wanna use the resources that you have available and this very easy to take with you anywhere. Just press it against right here near the armpit area and use the palm. So I'm using, the, this is my left side. I'm gonna use my palm of my right side to press down here and I'm going to use my left arm I'm going to go in and out like this and another variation that you can do with this which I love to do is to go across like this this really really helps and of course do it on both sides even though yes we hold our instrument here on this side but just to keep things even on both sides, get the other side as well. I'm not gonna do it in this video for time's sake and because my mic is right here, so it's gonna make a lot of noise. So now I'm gonna get into exercise number four, but before we get into it, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please give me a quick thumbs up down below to help support my channel and so that YouTube is more likely to share this kind of content with more folks. So the next exercise is going to be the wall stretch for the pectoral muscle again. Um, this one has been a hit or a miss for me, so you might want to play around with it a little bit. So what you're going to do is you're going to find 
a wall with a corner like this. It could be a doorway. Those are actually great for this. And I'm going to use this as an example to show you. So I'm going to take my right arm in this case. Um, you can do it on both sides. I'm using my right arm because it's right here. I'm going to put the forearm right on the wall like this with the palm touching the wall. And instead of facing the wall this way, I'm actually going to keep my arm like this, but I'm going to turn this way. So what you're going to feel, you're going to feel a little stretch right here. Where the pectoral muscle is and you can also play around with it because you might not feel it right away if you step take a step forward away from this you're going to feel it more it's going to be more intense if you take a step forward or if you turn more and another variation you can do to play around with it is change the height of where your arm is and it's going to feel different so you're going to play around with this and see which one makes sense for you. For me, actually, it works when I put my arm a little higher like this. And on different days, you're going to find it feels different. So it really depends. Um, so let me know what you think about this one. The next exercise we're going to do sitting down on the edge of a chair. And this one is very important. Actually, it's one of the first exercises I had to do in physical therapy and it's very essential. Um, we're going to stretch this area over here which is the upper trap muscle. So the way we're going to do it is we'll take the left arm and we're going to put the palm either on the seat or you can sit on your palm if that works better for you. And then you're going to take your right hand and very gently take your head and lean it to the right side and you're going to feel a little stretch right over here and be gentle with this don't go too intense another variation of this is to do the same thing but look down at your armpit and it's going to target a slightly different area so again play around with this one as well and see what works better for you and even out repeat on the other side of course this side is not as problematic but it's good to do both sides to keep things even the last exercise from the series is my favorite we're going to use a resistance band and i know this fits in your case so no excuses and this one has been super super awesome for me because it's going to target the mid back section and mobilize the shoulder blades and the reason we're targeting the mid back section right now is because that's going to help prevent the overuse of the upper traps i'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about this in another video so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these this one is the brand theraband which is my favorite so far i'm going to leave links to this and also where you can get one of these down below in case you're wondering they do come in different colors which designate different resistance levels this one's a medium resistance not too strong not too weak so i like it so what we're going to do is we're going to hold it like this take your elbows put them against your body like that and we're going to pull this way but without without going like this with the elbows, keep the elbows by your sides. So we're going to do 15 of these, or you could do 10 or eight, depending on where you are in your process. And do two or three sets of these. I love to do this after performances and during intermission. One thing that I learned from Angela is that the location of the pain is not necessarily the source of it. And in my case, that was very true. One of the reasons that my upper traps were overworking is because I had weaker muscles in my mid back area, as pointed out by my physical therapist. This caused my upper traps to overcompensate. And this is a very common problem for people who sit for many hours. So in a future video, we are going to go over a few ways that we can strengthen the mid back area that you can add to your pre playing routine, something that you can do before rehearsals or concert. Once that video is out, I'm going to put it in this box right over here. Stay healthy, be mindful and happy practicing.